सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सिक्स इन टाइटल आर पास वन पेज नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर चैप्टर थ्री टाइटल इन द अर्लीएस्ट सिटीज सेविंग एन ओल्ड बिल्डिंग Jaspal and Harpreet were playing cricket in the lane outside their home when they noticed the people who were admiring the dilapidated old building that the children called the haunted house. Look at the architecture, said one of the men. Have you seen the fine wood carving? asked one of the women. We must write to the minister so that she makes arrangements to repair and preserve this beautiful house. Why, they wondered, would anybody be interested in the old run-down house? The story of Harappa. Very often old buildings have a story to tell. Nearly a hundred and fifty years ago, When railway lines were being laid down for the first time in Punjab engineers stumbled upon the site of Harappa in present day Pakistan to them it seemed like a mound that was a rich source of ready made high quality bricks so they carried off thousands of bricks from the walls of the old buildings of the city to build railway lines many buildings were completely destroyed Then about 80 years ago archaeologists found the site and realized that this was one of the oldest cities in the subcontinent as this was the first city to be discovered all other sites from where similar buildings and other things were found were described as harappan these cities developed about 4700 years ago Very often old buildings are pulled down to make way for new construction. Do you think it is important to preserve old buildings? Page number 25. What was special about these cities? Many of these cities were divided into two or more parts. Usually the part to the west was smaller but higher archaeologists describe this as the citadel generally the part to the east was larger but lower this is called the lower town very often walls of baked brick were built around each part the bricks were so well baked that they have lasted for thousands of years the bricks were laid in an interlocking pattern and that made the walls strong on page number 25 map number 3 is shown with the title the earliest cities in the subcontinent these cities were found in the punjab and sindh in pakistan and in gujarat rajasthan haryana and the punjab in india Archaeologists have found a set of unique objects in almost all these cities red pottery painted with designs in black stone weights seals special beads copper tools and paralleled sided long stone blades the names of these cities are Harappa Rakhigarh Kalibanga Gamerivala Mohanjodaro Chanhudaro Sotkakoh Dholavira Surkotada Lothal In some cities special buildings were constructed on the citadel for example in Mohanjodaro a very special tank which archaeologists call the great bath was built in this area this was lined with bricks coated with plaster and made watertight with a layer of natural tar 
there were steps leading down to it from two sides, while there were rooms on all sides. Water was probably brought in from a well and drained out after use. Perhaps important people took a dip in this tank on special occasions. Other cities such as Kalibanga and Lothal had fire altars where sacrifices may have been performed. And some cities like Mohanjodaro, Harappa and Lothal had elaborate storehouses. Page number 26 On this page, a picture is shown. This is the picture of the Great Bath. Houses, drains and streets. Generally, houses were either one or two stories high with rooms built around a courtyard. Most houses had a separate bathing area and some had wells to supply water. Many of these cities had covered drains. Notice how carefully these were laid out in straight lines, although you cannot see it. Each drain had a gentle slope so that water could flow through it. Very often, drains in houses were connected to those on the streets and smaller drains led into bigger ones. As the drains were covered, inspection holes were provided at intervals to clean them. All three, houses, drains and streets, were probably planned and built at the same time. On the left side of this page, there is another picture. It shows how bricks were arranged to build walls in Harappan cities. List at least two differences between the houses described here and those that you studied about in Chapter 2. Page number 27 Life in the City A Harappan city was a very busy place. There were people who planned the construction of special buildings in the city. These were probably the rulers. It is likely that the rulers sent people to distant lands to get metal, precious stones and other things that they wanted. They may have kept the most valuable objects such as ornaments of gold and silver or beautiful beads for themselves. And there were scribes, people who knew how to write, who helped prepare the seals and perhaps wrote on other materials that have not survived. On the right side of this page, a picture is shown. This is the picture of a street in Mohanjodaro with a drain. Right below this picture, there is another picture. It shows a well. Besides, there were men and women, craftspersons, making all kinds of things, either in their own homes or in special workshops. People were travelling to distant lands or returning with raw materials and perhaps stories. Many terracotta toys have been found and children must have played with these. On the far left bottom of this page, a picture is shown. It's a Harappan seal. The signs on the top of the seal are part of a script. This is the earliest form of writing known in the subcontinent. Scholars have tried to read these signs, but we still do not know exactly what they mean. Just next to this 
is another picture. These are terracotta toys. Make a list of the people who lived in the city. Were any of these people listed as living in villages such as Mehargarh? Page number 28 New crafts in the city. Let us look at some of the objects that were made and found in Harappan cities. Most of the things that have been found by archaeologists are made of stone, shell and metal, including copper, bronze, gold and silver. Copper and bronze were used to make tools, weapons, ornaments and vessels. Gold and silver were used to make ornaments and vessels. On the top left-hand side of this page, a picture is shown. These are stone weights. Notice how carefully and precisely these weights are shaped. These were made of chert, a kind of stone. These were probably used to weigh precious stones or metals. In the middle of this page, on right hand side, a picture is shown. These are beads. Many of these were made out of carnelian, a beautiful red stone. The stone was cut, shaped, polished and finally, a hole was bored through the center so that a string could be passed through it. There is another picture in the middle of this page. It shows stone blades. The Harappans also made seals out of stone. These are generally rectangular. See illustration on page number 27. And usually have an animal carved on them. The Harappans also made pots with beautiful black designs, such as the one shown on page number 6. Was metal used in the villages you learnt about in chapter 2? Was stone used to make weights? There is another picture on the right hand bottom of this page. It shows an embroidered cloth. A stone statue of an important man found from Mohanjodaro shows him wearing an embroidered garment. Cotton was probably grown at Mehargarh from about 7,000 years ago. Actual pieces of cloth were found attached to the lid of a silver vase and some copper objects at Mohanjodaro. Archaeologists have also found spindle whorls made of terracotta and faience. These were used to spin thread. Page number 29 On this page, a picture is shown describing faience. Faience Unlike stone or shell that are found naturally, payans is a material that is artificially produced. A gum was used to shape sand or powdered quartz into an object. The objects were then glazed, resulting in a shiny, glassy surface. The colors of the glaze were usually blue or sea green. Fayance was used to make beads, bangles, earrings and tiny vessels. Many of the things that were produced were probably the work of specialists. A specialist is a person who is trained to do only one kind of work, for example, cutting stone or polishing beads or carving seals. Look at the illustration on page number 28 and see how well the face is carved and how carefully the beard is shown. 
this must have been the work of an expert craftsperson. Not everybody could have been a specialist. We do not know whether only men were specialists or only women were specialists. Perhaps some women and men may have been specialists. In Search of Raw Materials Raw materials are substances that are either found naturally such as wood or ores of metals or produced by farmers or herders. These are then processed to produce finished goods. For example, cotton produced by farmers is a raw material that may be processed to make cloth. While some of the raw materials that the Harappans used were available locally, many items such as copper, tin, gold, silver and precious stones had to be brought from distant places. The Harappans probably got copper from present-day Rajasthan and even from Oman in West Asia. Tin, which was mixed with copper to produce bronze, may have been brought from present-day Afghanistan and Iran. Gold could have come all the way from present-day Karnataka and precious stones from present-day Gujarat, Iran and Afghanistan. Page number 30 On the right-hand top and in the middle of this page, there are two pictures. These pictures show how goods were carried from one place to another. Look at the illustrations. One shows a toy and the other is a seal. Can you suggest what the modes of transport used by the Harappans were? Did you come across illustrations of wheeled vehicles in earlier lessons? Food for people in the cities While many people lived in the cities, others living in the countryside grew crops and reared animals. These farmers and herders supplied food to craftspersons, scribes, and rulers in the cities. We know from remains of plants that the Harappans grew wheat, barley, pulses, peas, rice, sesame, linseed and mustard. A new tool, the plough, was used to dig the earth for turning the soil and planting seeds. While real ploughs, which were probably made of wood, have not survived, toy models have been found. As this region does not receive heavy rainfall, some form of irrigation may have been used. This means that water was stored and supplied to the fields when the plants were growing. The Harappans reared cattle, sheep, goat, and buffalo. Water and pastures were available around settlements. However, in the dry summer months, large herds of animals were probably taken to greater distances in search of grass and water. On the left bottom, a picture is shown. It shows a toy plough. Today, in many farming communities, only men use the plough. We do not know whether the Harappans followed such customs or not. They also collected fruits like bear, caught fish and hunted wild animals like the antelope. Page number 31 A closer look, Harappan towns in Gujarat. The city of Dholavira was located on Khadir Bait also spelled as Bet, in the run of Kutch, where there was fresh water and fertile soil. Unlike some of the other Harappan cities, which were divided into two parts, Dholavira was divided into three parts, and each part was surrounded with massive stone walls. 
with entrances through gateways. There was also a large open area in the settlement where public ceremonies could be held. Other finds include large letters of the Harappan script that were carved out of white stone and perhaps inlaid in wood. This is a unique find as generally Harappan writing has been found on small objects such as seals. The city of Luthal stood beside a tributary of the Sabarmati in Gujarat, close to the Gulf of Khambath. It was situated near areas where raw materials such as semi-precious stones were easily available. This was an important centre for making objects out of stone, shell and metal. There was also a storehouse in the city, many seals and ceilings. The impression of seals on clay were found in this storehouse. A picture is shown in the bottom of this page. It's a dockyard at Lothal. This huge tank may have been a dockyard where boats and ships came in from the sea and through the river channel. Goods were probably loaded and unloaded here. Page number 32 A building that was found here was probably a workshop for making beads, pieces of stone, half-made beads, tools for bead making and finished beads have also been found here. A picture is shown on this page. It depicts seals and ceilings. Seals may have been used to stamp bags or packets containing goods that were sent from one place to another. After a bag was closed or tied, a layer of wet clay was applied on the knot and the seal was pressed on it. The impression of the seal is known as a sealing. If the sealing was intact, one could be sure that the goods had arrived safely. Seals are used even today. Find out what they are used for. The Mystery of the End Around 3,900 years ago, we find the beginning of a major change. People stopped living in many of the cities. Writing, seals and weights were no longer used. Raw materials brought from long distances became rare. In Mohanjodaro, we find that garbage piled up on the streets. The drainage system broke down and new, less impressive houses were built, even over the streets. Why did all this happen? We are not sure. Some scholars suggest that the rivers dried up. Others suggest that there was deforestation. This could have happened because fuel was required for baking bricks and for smelting copper ores. Besides, grazing by large herds of cattle, sheep and goat may have destroyed the green cover. In some areas, there were floods. But none of these reasons can explain the end of all the cities. Flooding or a river drying up would have had an effect in only some areas. Keywords City Citadel Ruler Scribe Craftsperson Metal Seal Specialist Raw Material Plough Irrigation Page number 33 it appears as if the rulers lost control. In any case, the effects of the change are quite clear. Sites in Sindh and West Punjab, present-day Pakistan, were abandoned, while many people moved into newer, 
smaller settlements to the east and the south. New cities emerged about 1,400 years later. You will read about them in chapter number 5 and 8. Elsewhere, find Egypt in your atlas. Most of Egypt is a dry desert except for the lands along the river Nile. Around 5,000 years ago, kings ruled over Egypt. These kings sent armies to distant lands to get gold, silver, ivory, timber and precious stones. They also built huge tombs known as pyramids. When they died, the bodies of kings were preserved and buried in these pyramids. These carefully preserved bodies are known as mummies. A large number of objects were also buried with them. These included food and drink, clothes, ornaments, utensils, musical instruments, weapons and animals. Sometimes even serving men and women were buried with the rulers. These are amongst the most elaborate burials known in world history. Do you think kings would have needed these things after death? Imagine, you are travelling with your parents about 4,000 years ago from Lothal to Mohanjodaro. Describe how would you travel, what your parents might carry with them and what you would see in Mohanjodaro. Page number 34 Let's recall. Number 1. How do archaeologists know that cloth was used in the Harappan civilization? Number 2. Match the columns. Copper Gold Tin Precious stones Gujarat Afghanistan Rajasthan Karnataka Number 3 Why were metals, writing, the wheel and the plough important for the Harappans? Let's discuss. Number 4 Make a list of all the terracotta toys shown in the lesson. Which do you think children would have enjoyed playing with the most? Number 5. Make a list of what the Harappans ate and put a tick mark against the things you eat today. Number 6. Do you think that the life of farmers and herders who supplied food to the Harappan cities was different from that of the farmers and herders you read about in chapter number 2. Give reasons for your answer. Let's do. Number 1. Describe three important buildings in your city or village. Are they located in a special part of the settlement? For example, the centre. What are the activities that take place in these buildings? Number 8. Are there any old buildings in your locality? Find out how old they are and who looks after them. Some important dates. Cotton cultivation at Mihargarh about 7000 years ago. Beginning of cities about 4,700 years ago. Beginning of the end of these cities, about 3,900 years ago. The emergence of other cities, about 2,500 years ago. The chapter 3 ends here. Narrator, Babla Kochar. Producer, Vimlesh Chaudhary. Presented by CIET NCERT. New Delhi, India.